regrets? I think most of us do, but I ask because I think that a lot of midlife is all about getting mired down in a layering of regrets. Regrets about things you did that you wish you hadn't done, regrets about things you haven't done yet and wish you had by now. And being in that place of regretting what you have done or regretting what you haven't done yet takes you away from the present moment of your life. You really are stuck on a regret thought island somewhere and not present in the life that you're living. It's it's almost like those regret spirals that we get into are an escape from the life that we're in. And you know that here on Midlife Crisis to a Centered Life Thriving, what I'm really getting after is helping you to love the life you're in. Learn to love your story, right? That is the website, learntoloveyourstory.com. So as I was going through some of my older podcasts that I wanted to highlight this summer, one that I came across, which I did towards the end of my first season, was called You Are Your Life's Purpose. And it really is a theme that is near and dear to me. Um, It's one of my favorites, right? So I started out last week kind of showing you what one of your favorites was. And this week, I want to show you one of my favorites. I will share that podcast itself, but I actually have a little something at the end that I'm going to share with you that I hope helps you to want to get in the life that you're in. And you certainly can use regret as you know, a rumble strip to guide you on what you want to be doing in your life presently. We just don't want to get lost in beating ourselves up. And that behavior starts to happen when we're really focused on the regrets of the past and the regrets of things we haven't yet done. I want you to use that compassionate lens, and you'll hear me talk about that in the podcast today. Now, If you haven't had any regrets in your life and things are swimming, then maybe this is a podcast for you to skip. But for those of us that have regrets, keep listening. I know your deep, dark secret. You don't like your life. You're a woman in midlife. And for the past two decades or more, you've poured yourself in to other people. You've poured yourself into your career, your family, and yet on the inside, you feel broken, and that's no way to be. I'm Dr. Natalie Marr. I'm a clinical psychologist and a life transition expert. It wasn't too long ago that I was in your shoes, waking up in my early 40s thinking, I've got two failed marriages, and I'm a single mom for the second time in my life. And I just knew that I could do better, that I could feel better. Fortunately for you, I have about 20 years experience clinically, and so I've created a method that will help you learn to love your story. I know that the story that you're telling yourself about your life feels awful, and I know that you think that you can't change that. I assure you, you can. And when we work together, I'm gonna help you to craft a different story, a story that you love, a story that makes you want to get up every single day. Let's work together to help you love your story. Are you on my mailing list yet? Because if you're not, you really should be. You want to join at learntoloveyourstory.com. If you scroll down, I'm giving away a freebie for you. Honestly, you know what it is? A free course. I sell online courses, but this, this is a course just for you. And it's about freeing yourself, letting go of what others' expectations and ideas are for you. You know, that nagging self-doubt in your head, it's usually fueled by your consideration of what others think of you over your consideration of what you think of you. And so I teach you in my video all about what is underlying that kind of self-doubt and how to get out of that conundrum. And I give you a workbook that goes with it that helps you to build the skill sets that you're going to need for that. So please make sure you're on my mailing list because At the least, you're going to get a free gift. And at the most, you're going to hear about all the things that we're doing on Midlife Crisis to a Centered Life Thriving and LearnToLoveYourStory.com. And you don't want to be missing out on any of the new things that will be coming your way. 
Welcome back everybody to Midlife Crisis to a Centered Life Thriving. And today we are going to go back in time, uh, back actually to about this time last summer. It was actually a little bit earlier than this time last year that I was preparing to go on a five to six week trip that I did um, with my daughter. And I, uh, in anticipation of that, was really reflecting on how much fun I had been having for the like, like last six months. I think it was six months of the podcast because I had only started it in 2023. So now I'm a year and a half in. I got some, I got some, you know, street cred and some time under my belt. And yet still, this has been such a joy to bring this podcast to I just want you to know, like, it's a it's a joy for me to sit down and have conversations with you. It's a joy for me to have conversations with these really remarkable experts in women's health, in women's mental health, and women who are in midlife, in um, helping us with struggles, helping us uh, change mindset and get out of stuck places. I love everything about what I bring here on Midlife Crisis to a Centered Life Thriving. And one of my favorite parts is really just these intimate conversations. It's it's like it's like having an ongoing conversation with all of you. You know, we might not all be in the same room or listening and, and thinking about this at the same time. And yet we're all kind of united by these conversations with the topics that I bring here on the podcast. And this one that I'm bringing to you today, that you are your life's purpose, was near and dear to my heart. In fact, shortly after I created a guided meditation around this subject for my group coaching group at the time, and I'm going to link it in the notes today. So I'm giving you a free gift with this podcast, but I want you to listen to my original podcast. So just, you know, sit tight and uh, buckle in for hearing a little bit from, you know, Natalie a year ago, but Dr. Natalie a year ago still felt the same as I do today, which is, you know, I want to help you understand how living in a life of regret is not the place to be. It is what gets us stuck when we're focused on the regret itself and not what we need to change in our present life to stay in our life, to stay in the present moment, the here and now, and enjoy what we have right now. And I really started to discover that after my last divorce. Um, so I highlight that in this podcast that you're going to hear today. And uh, it, it it didn't come without its hard knocks, but it was a lesson that has forever changed me on my journey and um, definitely keeps me doing things just like this, coming back and having these ongoing conversations with you because I wanted that. You know, I needed that when I went through these things and I wanted to be in a world where that stuff was happening and I created it. I, I made sure that I was going to be in my life in such a way that made me feel like, okay, I got this. I can do this. So enjoy listening to my favorite podcast from season one and we'll chat once you're done. Hmm. Yeah. Nothing fancy today. Just a few words of wisdom wrapping up what I've been talking about, you know, going after those big dreams. And I'll be honest, it started out that I had this podcast recorded. And when I went back to do the editing that I do every week, it all kinds of mumbled mumbo jumbo. But what I realized is it had stayed way too technical anyway. And I probably was going to want to add this little love letter piece to it. And now I've just decided because I re-record it this morning as I'm going to post it, I'm just going to stick to the love letter part of it. You know, this week I started a two-part series. I recorded the first of my two-part series on living a regret-free life. And that's a big deal, right? Because guess what, ladies? Um, we're going to have some regrets. It's going to be real. It's not like, I mean, that you're going to live a life where you're always making the right choice, the choice that's going to bring you the most joy the first time. That's not how this works at all. Mm -mm. Life is meant to have struggle. In fact, our literal neurobiology and nervous system is wired for us to go through struggle. I've talked about this before. We're like human adaptive machines. We are AI. We are what AI is based off of. If you want to think about it that way, we are intelligent. We are always going out into our world and evolving. There is no, I need to recreate me in my midlife. 
you need to keep evolving as you in your midlife. That's, that's really what this is all about. And I think that there is one lesson in particular that was the most powerful for me. And it didn't happen until I was in the worst of the worst of the worst, right? Like it wasn't until I was really hitting a rock bottom. So let me tell you a little bit about um, this particular time in my life in 2018. This this hour, even in 2018, I was still in a marriage, but I had literally just been handed information that I could not turn away from anymore. A few weeks before this, in the middle of May in 2018, I found my little butt parked on a park bench, watching my child play at the playground, living her best life, little three-year-old self, while I was sitting there thinking to myself, Oh my God. I had just learned something. I had tried to approach my ex with it. It did not go well. You know how this goes towards those end of those relationships. And I started to write out a list of all I was regretting, all that I like, and this I am going to miss out on because of this marriage and this I'm going to miss out on because of this marriage. Cause I was still sitting in that mindset that man, if I walked away, it was a failure, man, if I, you know, gave this person that I had promised, you know, a commitment to an ultimatum that said, do what you need to do for your side of this, stay committed. And I'm in it with you. I'm in it to win it. Or I got to walk. I just wasn't quite there yet. Right. It was the middle of May, but by this time in 2018, my friends, I was a numbed out hot mess as I was moving about my house, packing things up, essentially. That's really where I was. I was trying to the best of my ability to keep my shit together for my kid's sake, right? But I really knew that the world, like the bottom had fallen out, that I had quite literally no idea what I was going to do next. I was 43 years old. I had a three-year-old and I had a 15-year-old who was just about to enter high school and we were heading into the summer ahead of that. I was moving into a one room, very small extra bedroom in my sister's house in the basement, 43. I worked at a group practice, was doing pretty well. Actually, I had quite a great caseload, but I was only working a couple of days a week. I was not going to be able to support myself and I had financially hit rock bottom in large part. That was parts of what broke up my, my last marriage. So I was like, move. I was, it was bleak. I'm not even going to lie to you. It was really bleak. It was not a great moment in my life. And I could sit here today and tell you how much I regret decisions I made that put me in that position. And that would bring me into a mindset that really is focusing on where I went wrong in my life, not where were my opportunities. What I'm going to sit here and tell you today is I have such respect and love for that version of me. If I could sit next to her, I would just hold her. I would just hug and love her. And tell her that what she's doing is the right thing. And I'm getting a little emotional as I think about it. But I don't think of her choices as regrets. In fact, hers were courageous very much so because she was the turning point, right? But I don't even think of the the person, you know, in mid-May as somebody that I regret and her decision to keep plugging along for another few weeks. I don't regret the person that made the decisions to get into them. I don't regret any of them. I love all aspects of myself. And this has been the major shift in my life. And here is how I I frame it for you. And here's how I want you to continue to frame it for yourself from this point forward in your midlife. Your life's purpose was set out before you ever took your first breath on this earth. Your life's work is you. You, my friend. That's it. You're going to get to have kids or marriages or jobs 
or friends or family that you also will be entangled with in your lifetime. And yes, you have responsibilities to all of those people and things, but your true life's purpose is you. So the idea of living a regret-free life isn't that we don't have moments of regret that then create discomfort, that we don't have even moments of huge struggle or small struggle that create discomfort and tell us something's got to shift. Of course, that's how life works. This is how we're wired to notice the struggles in our life. But the, the life purpose is how much do I appreciate this woman that I am and that I am becoming, like utterly becoming all moments of every day. How much am I loving on her? How much am I taking care of her? Because she is my life's purpose. And when I invest in her, she invests in all kinds of things that are very important to me and is better at doing it. Like that's the reality, my friends. So it, it, like, there's no like, I, I, I can and will give you lots of tools to live a regret-free life, but there's no real trick to here's how you live a regret-free life in five free steps. Like that's not how this works. It's work. It's effort. It's a daily showing up for yourself. It's a daily putting yourself first always on your list. Now, some of you are um, people who are godly people and that walk in a faith. Here's what I would challenge you to think. If there is that higher power that you believe in, that you are supposed to love above all things, what is the one thing that that power gave you? You, your soul, your spirit, your presence on this earth. And that is how you put that God first. Right. And for those of us that are more like well, the universe, you know, I just it, it, it's not really God to me, but I know that there's something that's a higher power there. Again, I want you to think about what is the literally just the one thing in this world that you have full control over. You. So stop getting mucked up and worried about getting mired down in your life by the things by the careers, by the families, by the choices, get invested in who you are as a person. That's what I want you to do for yourself. You, my love, are your life's purpose. And how you show up to her is done in all the little things of showing up each and every day. It isn't in grand gestures. It's in did I make my bed so that the last thing I see today is that I did something for myself the first thing I did today? Did I make my cup of coffee because I want to drink it from home and not in a rush out of a McDonald's drive through It's in, am I choosing to put my self-care on my calendar and move other things around it rather than moving it around the other things in my life? And in every step, every small step like that, you're accruing an approach to yourself where you're going to be living in a regret-free life. Now, I do think that some of us are mired down at different times in our lives. And me, that version of me in 2018 was definitely there. I want you to really do an assessment of your life. And we start with time. Time sickness is kind of a symptom that really tells us that something's awry. <laughs> Something is off for us when we have this kind of idea that we're always rushing, that there's always more that needs to get accomplished. Then I want you to sit in some of the tools that I'm going to give you and really think through, why am I rushing? Where am I going? What's happening here? What do I know about this time? Non-judgmentally, right? Show up compassionately with love with yourself and just look at where your hours are going every day. And then start looking at like, if I look at the priority list though, like here are the values I have, here's what's important to me. Here's where my time's being spent. Where, where are the mishaps there? Really taking a look at that helps you to identify just, you know, 
you, you just kept doing the next right thing in front of you and, and things went off course a little bit, but it'll help you to be able to really address where you need to bring them back online. So another part of what we need is to be sure that we are also staying in community with one another, getting the support that we need so that we can pull this off, right? I could not have made it through 2018 without some major players in my life, some really good friends, a sister that I... I am indebted to for life. She's carried me out of more holes than I can tell you, but sometimes also can just bring me such joy in those moments. And, you know, even my kids were one of the things that pulled me through that really dark time. But I, I am indebted to, to that woman, that woman that realized as she was numbingly walking through and packing up her dream home from a marriage that was not going to work, I am indebted to her for, for taking on those really difficult times so that I today can sit and reflect about, I've just done six months of a podcast and I love it. And I'm going to go on a five week working from home tour. And I'm happy about that. These are really important things to be thinking about. Please do something anything, really. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Remember yourself. Stand up for yourself. Show up for yourself. There is real power in that. I promise you. There is real power in even on our darkest days, remembering that we are our life's purpose. You want to be living in a life where you feel like you're living your best life and that you can reflect most days on, oh, this is great. Like even in the monotony of doing work and getting packed up, like that's no fun getting prepared. There's a lot of things that I've been doing this week that have my hair pulling out, but I love my life and you won't get there if you don't love who you are at all points of your life. Don't ever regret yourself. You, my friend, are your life's purpose, and you, my friend, are your own love story, and you, my friend, you are the love of your life. Remember that and keep listening so that you too can keep getting the tools that you need to learn to love your story. Hmm, I still love it. I do. I still love that podcast and uh, really felt like, you know, you hear me say this right at the beginning of that podcast, but I messed up. I had like recorded a podcast and when I went back to edit it, it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo, which sometimes happens because my mic does not play nice <laughs> in the sandbox with me. And uh, it was actually kind of a, a happy mistake because then when I went to go re-record it um, over the weekend, I, I had I didn't have the time. And so I only just kind of went to the what I called the love letter part of that podcast, which was really just to talk to you and say, listen, don't get mired down in these regrets, you know, start to step into the life that you have and start making choices in such a way that that you're finding what's great about the life you're in and that you're making decisions to bring more of that into your sphere um, instead of worrying about what you didn't do or, or what you missed out on. There's no reason to stay there other than, like I had said earlier today, other than to think about it like it's a, a rumble strip on the side of the highway to bring you back in, right? Like when you're regretting, you're kind of moving into that old behavior of beating yourself up and not being compassionately self-aware. And so hopefully it can cue you to come back on track for yourself. But I have a gift for you today that I'm going to put in the notes, which is I had a um, I, I had created a guided meditation for my group at the time that I had done that podcast before taking off on my trip. And so I'm going to give you a link to it. If you've listened to this, it'll be linked in the notes. And um, I really encourage you to use that guided meditation. And uh, think about ways in which you can identify with this idea that you are your life's purpose, right? As part of this freebie that I'm giving you, in the actual meditation, in the guided meditation, I share with you a poem that is one of my favorites. Now, I'll just give you kind of the caveat that this is a poem that used to hang 
on my mother's um, office wall in our house and growing up. And I, I had read it and it honestly couldn't have appreciated it when I was a young person. Um, I think I started to understand that it would be something I could appreciate when I was uh, in my 20s. Uh, but my mother passed away when I was like 31. So unfortunately, I really didn't understand this poem until I uh, I came of age myself and certainly in midlife. And so part of the, the guided meditation, You Are Your Life's Purpose, has uh, this poem embedded in it. And I'm going to share it with you here on the podcast anyway, because I think, well, I just think it's a remarkable poem. And I definitely think that it it is something that it is something that really encapsulates where we are in this midlife space and you know how we can transition from regretting into honoring and loving and having compassion for ourselves. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube and you're seeing the video portion of this, I've actually pulled up the poem here. It's called Finding Her Here and it's by Jane Relliford Brown. But I'm gonna just tell you the poem, I'm gonna say the poem, and I want you really, if you can, if you're not driving or walking or doing something else as you're listening to this podcast, to just close your eyes and really think about the lyrics that are in this poem. I'm not even knowing if I say that correctly. I have a poet friend, I should ask her, but it it feels lyrical, you know, it feels lyrical to me. So I want you to just really soak in the words that are being said here and how they might uh, how they might impact you, how they might be reflective of who you are at present and how they might not be reflective of who you are, how you're thinking about yourself at present. And is there some way to get you there, right? So just listen to the poem. Finding her here. I am becoming the woman I've wanted. Ray at the temples, soft body, delighted, cracked up by life, with a laugh that's known bitter, but past it, got better. Knows she's a survivor, that whatever comes, she can outlast it. I am becoming a deep weathered basket. I am becoming the woman I've longed for, the motherly lover with arms strong and tender, the growing up daughter who blushes surprises. I am becoming full moons and sunrises. I find her becoming this woman I've wanted, who knows she'll encompass, who knows she's sufficient, knows where she's going, travels with passion, who remembers she's precious, but knows she's not scarce, who knows she is plenty plenty to share. And again, that poem is by Jane Relliford Brown. And it, it was a remarkable guide post for me when I uh, found the framed version of it again in my adult life, unpacking in the space where I live presently. Um, and I have it right over there on my office wall so that I can eyeball it all the time when I'm in a funk, when I'm worried about things, when I'm feeling a little paralyzed by the overwhelm of life in midlife, because I want to see it. I want to be reminded that I am becoming the woman I wanted, right? It's not an arrival. It's not a space where I got all, you know, I checked all the right boxes. Um, so regrets should, you know, be pushing me towards checking off another box. That's not what this is. It's it's about loving the person I am as I am becoming, right? It's about being uh, being in the moment with it and loving it at the same time. And I hope, I hope that you enjoy the little gift I'm giving you in the guided meditation. And I hope also that you enjoyed listening to what I talked about here today and that it's triggered something for you, some self-reflection maybe. Of, hmm, maybe I need to be working a little bit more on finding her here on loving the life that I'm in and uh, not not being so pulled and pushed by the ideas of regrets of things I haven't done yet. That, that finding her here, that's your centered life, thriving.
because I am a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of Minnesota, I have to make sure at the end of each of these episodes that I give you the disclaimer that none of the material that I talk about in these podcasts is meant to replace any kind of therapy or formal medical or mental health treatment. And in fact, anything that I offer on my website, my coaching programs, any kind of psychoeducational materials that I release are not a replacement for that level of care. So just take that into account when you listen. This is information for you, and hopefully you find it of value, both as an educational tool and for your entertainment. And I also wanna mention that if anyone you know is in a mental health crisis, needs additional help, I always include these two crisis resources. They're available to anybody. Pick up the phone and dial 988 for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. And you can always visit their website at suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Additionally, there's actually a crisis text line. So if you're not somebody that likes to pick up the phone, text H-O-M-E, HOME, to 741-741. To the crisis text line. And you can find them online at crisistextline.org. Thank you for listening to my podcast, and I hope that you like and follow me wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe consider leaving me a review. It always helps me to keep this podcast relevant when I know what you want to hear about.